Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today we're going to talk about color mats and defringing, color decontamination, stuff basically that's going to help you perfect that edge on your selection or selected and cutout object just even a little bit more perfectly. It's really important stuff. A lot of you may not know what it is. You might have just stumbled onto this tutorial or you might be following my channel, in which case, thank you, that's awesome. Um, but some of you might actually be looking for this. And the whole goal of this tutorial is gonna be like this, this is gonna be the tutorial that explains all of that stuff and helps you understand what uh, what we're doing as far as cleaning up the the fine edge of our selected object. Um, I do have a course that I'm selling on my website uh, all about how to retouch images and stuff like that. There's all kinds of great stuff in there as well. Um, I don't really dive that deeply into these kind of specific selections, but there is a lot of awesome stuff in the course. And if you pick it up, it supports stuffvid.com, and that's super cool. Let's talk about uh, these selection edges and color mats and stuff like that. So basically a color mat is like you can see here on the side of his face, a little bit of color that's sort of left over from our selection. This is a very rough selection I did of this guy. You can see he's just cut out and placed in here. No masking. Um, there's a big chunk of color up on top of his head. But it's just a rough selection. We're just going to use this as, as one of the examples here. If we go layer matting and choose defringe and choose to defringe this, uh, you know, about three pixels, it's going to search sort of a three pixel area there. Hit OK. You can see that Photoshop knocks away a little bit of that color. If we go over to his shirt here, it even knocked away some of this dark fringing on the edge of his shirt. Now, it didn't do a perfect job, but again, we're not really giving Photoshop a great selected object to work with. Ideally, you would get a much better selection. This was just one pass with the quick selection tool and just boom, command or control J, put up, pop him up onto his own layer and drag him into the image. Defringing, really, really useful. Now, if you have a layer which has a mask, such as this girl here, now we cut her hair out in a tutorial that we did last week, we can use another tool. So I'm gonna select this layer and I'm gonna go layer matting and choose color decontaminate. Now color decontaminate allows you to, uh, as I mentioned, work with layers that you have a mask applied to much, much, much more effectively. And she's not cut out. You can see very clearly we have a layer. Now if we reduce color decontaminate down to 1%, we don't see a huge difference. We're not applying much decontamination. If we increase it, however, to 100%, you can see that it's really gonna bring back some of the edges of the hair maybe a little bit too much, but just know that you have the option. You can you know, find a sweet spot and settle in where it blends with your background image just perfectly. Again, remember, that color mat is the color that you would be able to see sort of behind her hair, and she was photographed over a dark gray background. So if, if we're shooting, or if we're, uh, I'm sorry, moving her to an image where maybe she's standing in front of a, a navy blue cinder block wall, that would be very easy because relatively speaking, the color mat is going to be fairly similar. So you might not have to uh, decontaminate the color nearly as much. Maybe it'll just blend right together. So other images, you may want to decontaminate more. You're just going to see what works on an image by image basis, but just know that you're working with reducing saturation and brightness and all kinds of things from the very edge of your selected object, in this case with a mask, which is why we can use color decontaminate, and in theory, allowing it to blend better with the background which you're moving the image over. In fact, we can try here, this girl, and, and watch what it does. You can see all up here around her head, we have sort of this lightened color, which was because, I mean, if we just disable the mask for a second, she's laying here in this field with all this bright foliage around here. So let's see if we can do something about that lightened edge. Well, if we go layer matting, color decontaminate, and if I come in here and bring color decontamination up, we can see that it really just neutralizes just that funky edge that we couldn't really cut out. We don't want to get rid of it because we would actually be chopping away hair and getting rid of part of her head. So if we just commit that, and I can do a, a control Z, undo, redo, and you can see that it makes a pretty drastic difference. And I would say in this case, for the good, it really does a nice job. And we can do the same thing here with her. We're not going to uh, for the sake of time, but color decontamination is an amazing, amazing uh, little tool when you're working with especially complex selections uh, that that involve a mask. So this layer where we have a mask masking away the background. Um, before I move away from color decontamination, if you... I'm just going to just use quick select here to just grab like a selection of her face or something. If you're using the color or refine edge, excuse me, the refine edge command, there is also down here in the output area a decontaminate colors option built right in, which will allow you to decontaminate colors as you head out of refine edge. Now, if you followed this tutorial cutting her out, you're going to know that we didn't use refine edge. We used a different channel based technique. But just know you do have a decontaminate color option here in refine edge as well. 
it's pretty good. I do like to be able to really see live the selection in the selection what's going on. Um, I suppose you can you know change the way that you're viewing your selection that's being made. Um, I usually just use this red ruby overlay, uh, but you do have decontaminate colors here in the refine edge dialog as well. So in addition to all of that, let's talk about those last couple things here in matting, which is remove black and remove white matte. And this is super important, especially, I think, for graphic designers and web designers. Let me go to, uh, I'm just going to right click here. Nope, I'm not going to right click. I'm going to just cycle through my documents until I get, there we go. This is the one I'm looking for. So what I have here is, uh, this is actually a new video outro that I'm working on for Tutvid, and it may actually be here in this video, depending on whether or not I get it done in time. But the point is, I've got my social media networks coming in, or they're going to be animated in the video to flow in from the right-hand side of the screen. And here is going to be my Instagram profile. So I have the newer Instagram logo. I'm debating whether I should use the multicolor background or just the traditional Instagram blue. But for now, it's blue. Point is, though, if we zoom in on the Instagram logo, and it's just, whoop, I don't want to do that, and it's just a graphic that I got online, you can see it looks pretty bad on the edges. There's all that black edging. And we don't want that. We want it to look like a nice, smooth graphic. Well, if we select the Insta logo layer, it's just a pixel-based layer, we can go layer, matting, remove black mat, and watch what it does. I mean, look at that. That is amazing. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to hit Command or Control I to invert that because let's say it's a black graphic which has a little bit of white around it, right? Like a black graphic you've cut off of a white background, for instance. You can go layer, matting, remove white mat, and boom, it does the same thing, and you get this amazing, beautiful, smooth-edged graphic. It's far better than maybe this whole time you've been sort of command-clicking to select the layer and then trying to go, you know, select, modify, contract by, like, a pixel, and then Control-Shift or Command-Shift-I to invert the selection and hit the Delete key to delete everything away. I mean, you still have rough edges, and, well, it actually didn't do too bad of a job, but it still is an even better job when you just go, and, and faster and easier too, might I add, to just go boom, remove black mat, and you're done just that quickly. So defringing, removing mats, and working with mats in Photoshop, um, very important, very, very helpful. And also, actually, here, I can just show you here, if we go File, uh, Export, Save for Web Legacy, this is just your normal Save for Web and Graphics if you're using a, a non-Photoshop CC 2015 or newer version of Photoshop. And one of the things you have with your PNG 24 and your PNG 8, and I believe also your GIF files, is a matte option. And the reason this is really cool slash important is because, especially with GIF and PNG 8, if you just export something with very complex edges, you're going to have a very, very, very noticeable little outline of a certain kind of color. But let's say you know that this portrait is going onto a website which has like a dark green background. Well, you could go into matte and punch in, if you have the hexadecimal code perfect, you get the exact green, but you could just set the matte to be a specific kind of dark green and, and the edges of her hair are going to reflect reflect instead of bright white this dark green matte and all of this little greenness obviously would blend seamlessly with that background color of your website or forum or wherever you're posting this transparent graphic it can be very very helpful if you need to do something like that so in the gif and png8 especially when you have transparency check out the matte option there that's what it's for. That's what it is. So for color defringing and, and color decontamination and, and matte colors in general in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Maybe Shakespeare's Hamlet was really meant to be a story about miniature pigs. Pretty crazy, huh? Go ahead and hit that little like button now that we're friends. You know what I'm saying? Also, subscribe to my channel. There's nothing quite like it out there on the web, and I think you'll like what's to come. You can also sign up for the tutvid.com newsletter by using the link here in the video, and I'll send you 30 free time-saving features and tips in Photoshop that you are just going to love. And then, of course, social media. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter and Snapchat and everything. i got links down in the description to this video. Shakespeare's Hamlet, huh? Shakespeare's Hamlet. Little miniature pigs.